Capitalists without capital. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, I'm Florian Heiser and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I've got my Sunday Stein of coffee and I thought we'd have a look at this article that a few people sent to me. It's a very interesting one. It's from Bloomberg and it's entitled Capitalists Without Capital of Ruling Capitalism. Now, it's to do with the rise, should we say, of the unicorn businesses. There's a whole slew of famous ones that have gone bust. WeWork is the most recent one that failed to list. But, you know, the guy behind it still did pretty bloody well. So it's, it's a strange world, isn't it? It's a strange world. Let's have, a, let's have a look at this. So, what does it mean that some of the decade's biggest market winners were companies with no real net worth? Let's just dwell on that for a moment. No real net worth. It, it, yeah. So as a rule in life, as soon as, as soon as someone starts talking about intangibles, it's time to be suspicious. A mediocre athlete who is worth his place on the team because of his intangible qualities should arouse skepticism. So should any company selling the intangible quality of their assets. This is a serious problem because the stock market is increasingly popular, populated by intangible companies. Some 40% of public stocks quoted in the US have negative tangible book value. Just think about that, 40%. Meaning that their tangible assets aren't worth enough to repay all their debt. Now, could this be? Could this be because we've got not QE happening in the US, and we had QE happening there too, that where's all this money going? Maybe it's going to the stock market. Maybe we're seeing an inflation of the value of these stocks. Are we starting to see that happening here in Australia with the shockingly low cash rate and then people being encouraged or nudged to go into the share market to get a return so could that be why could that be why so two decades ago this is only true of 15 percent of companies according to vincent delard of international fc stone incorporated who has carried out intensive research on the subject such companies sound dreadful, intangible, material terms. Their share certificates aren't even worth the paper they are written on. Just, just think about that. I mean, we, can you get share certificates here in Australia? I thought it was all done online, but still, still. I want, actually, I'm trying to encourage Mina to save up some money and then invest in a good blue chip, boring share business to try and teach her that. And... Um, I want to get a certificate. I want to do it the old fashioned way. Just so she can frame it. And yet incredibly, a negative value fund composed of the shares of companies with negative tangible book value would have beaten the main US stock market. Represented by the Russell 3000 index by 24% over the last 20 years. So are we in financial clown world, everyone? Are we in financial clown world? Well, these valuations are just insane. That outperformance has almost all happened since the financial crisis. Hmm. Before that, the negative value fund had roughly tracked the benchmark. So I wonder why that is. So when negative is positive, shares of companies with negative tangible book value have bested the broader Russell 3000 benchmark, particularly in the past decade. Have a look at that difference. Have a look at that difference. And... I mean, it, he's saying this seems nuts, and it, sh it does seem nuts, doesn't it? But think about it. So does negative interest rates. There's a, it, the world is just a very funny place at the moment. Capitalists without capital are ruling capitalism. It also sounds very scary. The US stock market has pleasantly surprised many people by going on a decade-long rally. But the success of the negative value companies makes it sound as though that success is entirely built on sand. So what can explain this? Delard offers two popular explanations. One, this is down to the rapacious financial engineers and private equity investors who have taken over companies, sold their physical assets and leveraged them to the hilt rather than invest in new assets that make something. 
any new cash flow goes towards buying up shares and levering up still levering, levering up still further the entire rally is a triumph of creative accounting sounds familiar doesn't it number two the phenomenon is a side effect of the dematerialization of capitalism. Material assets don't matter as much as they used to. To believe that, we don't even need to succumb to airy excitement over the, the sharing economy. In the era of the internet, companies need far fewer physical assets to make a profit. And with rates spectacularly low for a decade, the economic moat once provided by factories, retail branch networks, or other big physical investments is no longer impregnable impregnable general electric co provides perhaps the most famous and painful example well there you go he has a point there pretty much anyone can start up a manufacturing business from their home just doing drop shipping getting it manufactured overseas selling it on amazon in some ways it is a different world to strengthen the notion that this is about the dematerialization of the economy international co comparisons show an east-west divide in the UK and the Eurozone, 30% of companies have net negative value. While in China, Japan and South Korea, barely any companies do. Increasingly, Asia has become the factory for the world, populated with financially and physically sturdy companies, while the US and to a lesser extent of Europe are becoming spirits in an immaterial world. In practice, these two explanations are not mutually exclusive. Tangible assets are less important, particularly when it comes to uh, when it is so cheap to finance the purchase of competing financial assets. And it's true that financial engineers have worked on maximizing earnings per share rather than broader measures of profit. This is clear from the growing discrepancy between the reported earnings of companies in the S&P 500, which keep rising until which kept rising until very recently, and the profits drawn up by the national income and product accounts as part of calculating GDP, which have been stagnant for years. Well, there you go. So GDP has been stagnant, even though earnings per share are going up. What's that telling you? So the immaterial world, the number of US companies with negative net worth has steadily climbed over the past two decades. Look at that in 2000. Lewis percent of companies with negative tangible book value, black, the market cap with negative tangible book value gone up 40% or 40% of those companies. Wow. There's perhaps one further explanation that needs to be mentioned. It reflects the rise of zombie companies. By this I mean companies that have been around for a long time and are no longer competitive, but can keep staggering forward zombie-like because it is so easy to obtain cheap financing. And this is this comes down to just, I mean, the example here is with the cash rate getting so low, You've got these companies that can just keep going on and they're not being allowed. They're not, they're not being put out of their misery in some regards. They're not being put out of their misery and that means there's no space, there's no market opportunity for new opportunities or new companies to arise out of the ashes of the fallen company. The, the you know, creative destruction that's necessary sometimes in an economy. The Bank of International Settlements is worried by the rise of zombie companies. Which it has been chart which has which has been charting for years, sorry. It defines a zombie broadly as a company whose interest coverage ratio, ICR, has been less than one, meaning that it doesn't produce enough cash to pay its debt payments. Oh crap. For at least three consecutive three years. And if it is at least ten years old, that is insane. So thirty percent of its existence, it hasn't met earned enough money to pay its debt. This excludes small companies and startups that are borrowing heavily to, to fund a plan for future growth. On this basis, some 12% of companies in the US are now zombie companies. Less than 2% were in this state three decades ago. Does that fill anyone, anyone with confidence at all? This should be of, and we've got the same thing here in Australia, guys. This should be of concern because it suggests that capitalism's process of creative destruction isn't working. Yes, because we have intervention in the market, which is simply artificially lowering this rate. Artificially lowering this rate. And it has lots of unintended consequences. This is the problem when when you don't want to take your medicine. 
All of these factors, I believe. Oh, hang on. Some big companies tend to be less productive than others, so their survival may well be a part of the explanation for the low productivity that has bedeviled the West since the financial crisis. All of these factors, I believe, are at work in the rise of negative value companies. In all cases, a return to higher interest rates would bring this group great difficulties. Zombies and companies hollowed out by private equity would face an existential crisis, while we would see how well the new immaterial giants could cope once money at a higher price. That in turn might help to explain why last year's moderate rise in interest rates by the Federal Reserve was greeted with a horror and a market sell-off that prompted a U-turn and this year's rally. Investors evidently didn't want to discover what would happen to negative value companies once interest rates return to normal. Can they ever return interest rates to normal? Are we in a trap where they can't? What happens here if our cash rate trends down and we start getting QE? Can they ever get out of that? Now the hope must be that they can postpone that moment indefinitely. Nothing lasts forever, does it? If that cannot happen, the, t the time will come when we will all learn a lot more about the true value of intangibles. And this was written by John Waters from Bloomberg. So guys, what do you think? What do you think? I think this is a concerning, a very concerning thing to worry about. And, and there you go. There you go. Sometimes these companies, maybe they, they, even if, if they had hard times, that's when you need to make tough decisions. That's when you really innovate. If your back's against the wall, that's when you decide as a business, okay, I'm going to keep going and do this, 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 or you're going to pull away and take it or fade into, into memory. Let me know what your opinion of this is. And do you think this will happen here in Australia or is it already? Guys, thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to help us produce more, I have a Patreon where you can make a small monthly donation. We also have the ability for you to join the channel here on YouTube where you get access to badges and emojis. We have affiliate links with Independent Reserve for crypto, Amazon and eBay for consumer purchases. We sell our very own pocket squares handmade on our Heisenstein website. And finally, we have PayPal for people who like to donate that way. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. And I will talk to you all later. Bye for now.